so much for tuning in. So I've been working with this book, The Sacred Magic of the Angels by David Goddard. The first exercise in here is a guided meditation where it's kind of an uh, introduction to the archangels. So I'd love to share this right now. So everyone, please just kind of sit back in your chair, get really relaxed, make sure you're going to be undisturbed, um, and just kind of start a slow rhythmic breathing. I'm going to go ahead and read through the meditation for you. This interior journey may be used as a means of introduction to the teaching angels if you have not worked with them before. Make sure you will be undisturbed, breathe deeply and rhythmically, but without any strain. Starting from your feet and moving upwards, tense your muscles and then allow them to relax. And also just visualize like a swirling golden energy swirling underneath your feet, completely calming and relaxing you. Just again, slowly move this energy up your legs, up your knees, thighs, hips, up and around your back, torso, shoulders, down, around your arms and your fingers, making sure to get both your arms, and then swirling around the neck, and then almost like a scarf wrapping that nice relaxing energy around your head and just repeating this as many times as you need to to feel completely relaxed when you feel tranquil begin to picture the images of this meditation allowing them to acquire clarity and three-dimensional vividness endeavor to, to use your senses in this journey, allowing touch, smell, hearing, and sight to give you the full benefit of this communion with the angels of light. See before you a tri trilithon gate. It's rearing upright, and the overhead lintel are formed of flawless crystal. Between the shimmering columns hangs a curtain of the color indigo, of deep violet, blue like the evening sky just just after the sun has set and before the stars appear. This mystical veil gently swells from an unknown breeze, and the center of the veil clearly shines a single star. Focus your mental attention between upon this gate between the worlds until your concentration causes the crystal to glow brighter and brighter. And a halo of rainbow light emanates from the portal you can hear a single high note, like a silver tone a bell. Now approach the gate and step through the veil. You are standing upon the shore of a lake, as still as glass, with a gentle mist rolling over its surface. A soft, clear light filters down from a silver sky, with no luminaries to be seen. You are robed in an olive green robe, girt with a white cord, Stout leather sandals are upon your feet, and a heavy black cloak envelops you, protecting you from the chill. There is an air of serenity about this place, a feeling of deep peace. No sound, just the silence, the gentle light, and the still waters. You hear the sound of rippling as the waters part for the passage of a boat. It seems to be coming from part of the lake where the mist is thickest. You observe that you are not ap apprehensive at all, but you are curious to know what kind of vessel sails upon the sacred lake. From the mist, a high proud boat emerges into view. It is formed of an ancient seasoned wood, and the rim of the hole is carved with letters of gold, and a language you don't recognize, but which provokes a strange resonance with within you. The tall prow is carved in the likeness of a hand holding a lamp, and in the lamp burns a clear violet flame. Six oars, three on each side, propel the strange vessel forwards, and the rowers are tall, slender beings, robed and hooded in silver. As the vessel draws in, it turns and you look along its length. Near the stern is a high wooden seat. It is empty. The boat ceases to move some ten feet from the shoreline. The oars rest. The silver-clad beams 
rise and look across to you. Silence falls again, and the lake returns to its former stillness. You feel somewhat embarrassed as the silence deepens and nothing appears to be said. Perhaps, you think, these beings can't speak. Tentatively, you reach out with your feelings, seeking to convey that you come as a seeker for the light. As soon as your heart center stirs to reach out to the silver-clad beings, you can feel their welcome flooding into you like a starburst of joy. With their greeting that transcends speech comes the knowledge that they have come far to meet you. They started out towards you the instant you decided to undertake this journey through inner space, but they cannot, may not, approach any closer to the shore. You must somehow go to them, cross this last space that separates you from each other. You must decide now. Do you wish to go on to the Temple of the High Servants of the One, or is it too deep of an undertaking? What do the still waters before you hold beneath their seemingly placid surface? What do you really know about the strange hidden beings in their fantastic boat, so close and yet a lifestyle away? And the depths of your being weigh your heart. If you feel doubt or dread, then with that self-knowledge pass back through the indigo veil in the crystal gate, back to the ways of sleeping humanity. There will be other opportunities of the great journey to retrace your steps to this shore. If, however, your heart burns within you, if your soul hungers for that which alone endures, then step forward into the waters. Now decide. You place one foot into the cold waters, feeling the lake bottom beneath you. You take it another step and another. The waters are now about your knees. You suddenly realize that the waters are wonderful. The touch of the still water fills you with profound peace. Waters soothe away unhealed pains and hurts like rain upon a desert. They feel the deep places of your soul and melt away all hardness. In wonder, you kneel down in the waters, letting them rise to your shoulders. Then you bow your head and they wash over you. You emerge from the waters like a dolphin, leaping with joy. Your senses are heightened, expanded in clarity, and you see upon the surface of the waters remaining between you and the boat, a path formed of golden light. It comes from the vessel, from the glorious beings you now see upon its deck. Tall, bright, and serene figures row with winged with lights, their eyes ablaze with endless joy, bent upon you, and their armed arms outstretched towards you. You float upon the waters. The angels lift you up onto the golden pathway. Do you see that your robes are now snow white, with your sandals are formed of woven grass, adorned with summer flowers. Without being aware of moving, save as a soft wind, you find yourself abroad, encircled by these living embodiments of love. It is akin to being reunited with old friends, whom you have always known, but have forgotten for a while. It is a sense of completion. The close proximity of the angels clarifies your mind, invigorates and stimulates your aura. Communication is unimpeded and rapid now, for your basic vibration rate is now quickened by these beings of light. They are the hosts of the cherubim, and they have been sent to bring you into the presence of the great teaching angel of humanity. The boat turns about, the six oars rise and dip into the still waters and it glides forwards like a swan towards the pearly gray mist. As the vessel enters the mist, your vision becomes limited, seeing less and less until even the sides of the boat disappear. As the mist thickens, the angels seem to vanish. For a moment, you are on the verge of heartbreak. Have your new found companions gone? Have they only found you to be, to be lost so soon? Look to the prow says a mind touch. You can still see the violet flame burning clear and unobscured. You open out with your inner senses. You find the presence of the angels caressing your mind, letting you know that although they may not always be in sight, they are always there if you call. 
The mist ahead begins to thin. You see a faint golden haze ahead, to which the bark uneerily sails. The vessel emerges into the warm golden light. All around are the still waters, but now reflecting a gold sky that shines clearly upon all with the beauty of sun and the softness of the moon. You notice that there are bright points of light hovering, flying, and swooping in the golden sky. Your angelic companions begin to sing high, pure, like temple bells, a paean of joy. You realize they are communing with the, f with the flying lights, which in response draw closer, singing too as they approach. Now you can see that they are also angels, unbound by any limitation. They soar in the light of the endless day. Some are bearing cups, chalices, and they swoop down to the surface of the glass-like lake, hovering like celestial dragonflies. They fill the chalice from the lake and fly up from the sight like comets. Your curiosity is aroused. Immediately in answer, one of the cherubim explains, These are the ministers of consolation. In answer to true prayer, they bear the cups filled from the still waters to those who suffer or have need. Have you not realized yet what these waters are? Look to the depth of the lake. You do so, baffled, seeing the beneath the placid surface, billowing tides of fire. Baffled, you inquire of the cherub. The still waters, he explains, are Mesla Grace. From this lake, all healing centers upon the earth draw their power. To this lake, the winged ones bring in sleep to those who suffer. From this lake, those angels who charge draw heaven's dew and take it to those of the earth who plain who have need. This is one of the reasons it was necessary for you to bathe in the waters before coming to us. One of the other cherubim on board approaches you holding a crystal cup within which the still waters glow and offers it to you. You take the cup bearing the life of the worlds and drink of that peace which passeth understanding. Ahead appears a tree-covered island and upon the high hill in the center stands a great octagonal temple built of living sunlight. The radiant structure is crowned with domes cupolas, and graceful minarets, and its image is reflected on all sides upon the surface of the healing lake. The boat approaches and draws in by the mystic isle. A warm breeze comes off the island, bearing the scent of laurel and frankincense trees that adorn it. You can see no path and wonder how you will reach the temple. There is a sound like the Cadence of wind chimes. You, you thus learn that the angels do laugh. Smiling, two of your companions place their strong arms about your waist, spreading their great wings, and rise with you up into the air. The other four cherubim accompany you before and after, singing again. With this joyous escort of angels, you are flown up to the hill, over the temple's entrance. Through a high placed rose window, you set down onto the mosaic floor of the sanctuary. The temple is vast. It soars up almost beyond sight. Inside the golden walls are the, are the color of sun suffused amber. In the east is a great seven branched minera, the lamp of the Elohim. Each cup alight with one colored flame, the seven making the spectrum of the rainbow. It is flanked on one side by, by a pillar of jet, and upon the other by a pillar of diamond. And the center of the pillar, upon a dais of four steps, is a simple white cubic altar. Its simplicity is stark in this glorious edifice. Upon the altar, bathed in a shaft of gentle starlight, is a, a golden yellow rose upon which gleams a, sin, a single drop of dew from the first dawn. The six cherubim form a semicircle around you and behind you. The descending shaft of starlight brightens, and a great voice cries, Michael, 
a column of gold salmon like some twenty feet high appears by the altar. Gabriel, Samael, cries the voice. Two great columns of silver and blue, the other of fiery scarlet, flank the first column. Again the voice, Raphael, Sachiel, Sariel. Three more bright columns join the first one, a vivid yellow, one violet purple, and one of sea green. For a third time, the voice fills the temple, Haniel, Kasiel, Uriel. Another trinity of luminous beams joins the first six. One of the gentle rose and turquoise, one of the deep greens and blues. On the third, brilliant as frozen lightning, the nine resplendent columns are about the altar. Great chords of music are heard, and the rapid flashes of color pass between them as they speak to one another. They are tending cherubim brain, as if in response to the presence of the great angel lords. The voice speaks again, calling you by name. You step forward, awed by the great very colored columns of force. The columns begin to move from the altar, sweeping around you, as if examining you. Each column brings a different emotional response from you. After a while, your sense of awe is replaced by pleasure at the beauty of these great lights. You feel the mind touch of Raphael first. Your consciousness tingles at his mental touch. Greetings, child of Earth. My brethren and I are pleased that you have won through to this place. We were appointed by the Ineffable One to help instruct your species for its return journey to Godhood. Now that you have come here, your work together now may begin in truth. Know this, we will never turn away from you. When you call, we will always come. But you may, if you wish, turn away from us. We are constant. Like that of whose light we were born, we abide. We are servants of the One. What you see of us now is a veiling of our true forms, whose light would sear the unprepared. Because we are those of our kind with whom you will work the most at first, we will take on thought presences, take on forms more familiar to your mind. Thus may we become more than teachers and a pupil, we shall become friends. For your life and ours are one in God. As he speaks, the yellow column is that of Raphael, becomes a mercury-type figure, with traditional winged sandals and a caduceus. Only the wide slanting eyes retained their angelic characteristics. The purple column of Satriel forms into a violet-clad kingly figure of great benevolence. Gabriel appears as a Grecian athlete in a blue-silver trimmed chiton. Samael as a knight in scarlet surcoat wielding a bright sword. Michael as a gold-vested priest. Asario, robed in sea green, holding a silver trident. Haniel, as a beautiful woman, robed in turquoise, a ronet of pink roses in her copper-red hair. Cassiel, crowned with jet, and robed in dark green, with a mantle of sable. And finally, Uriel, in a rainbow robe with a clear flame floating over his head. With the teaching angels in these forms, you feel less awestruck, more able to approach them as they intended. Together, you share some moments of private communion. Then, Uriel gives a sing signal to his eight brethren. You draw back, and they resume the appearance of high columns of corsicating light. They form a ring about the altar, and they begin to circle it, faster and faster, until you can no longer identify separate columns as they merge, creating a great vortex of colored light. They stretch upward, growing brighter in intensity and power. Then they are gone. And where the altar stood is now the crystal gate between the worlds. With its veil of indigo, adorned with a single star, you make your farewells to the cherubim who crude the baric 
with the intuitive knowledge that you will meet again. You approach the crystal gate. The indigo veil billows up and opens. You step through the gate, poised between the worlds, hearing Raphael's voice again. When you call, we will come. You have traveled far and deep, becoming aware of the weight and warmth of your physical body, the air in your lungs, the moisture in your mouth. Repeat your name a couple of times to establish your identity. Make sure you are fully back in this level of reality. Make sure you have a warm drink and a biscuit or sandwich to help you close down. Write your, write your record of this vision journey as, you, as soon as possible. For like a dream, the intensity and the details soon fade. Wow, that was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Just reading it, I could feel the energy. Um, my hands are buzzing with energy. Um, I'm just, I'm like, I'm like on fire right now. Like, I'm, I'm just like burning up. I need to like take off my jacket and turn on the AC or something. Oh, that was, that was spectacular, spectacular, spectacular. Um, so, wow, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did just by reading it. Um, I'm probably going to revisit this meditation a few times in this upcoming month. Thank you so much for, t for tuning in. I hope you have a blessed, blessed week.